O oh God, come to my assistance. Tongue 
heap he raises the poor to set them in the company of princes yes with the princes of his people to the childish wife he gives off home and gladdens her heart with children
Blessed be he, God, he has chosen us to live in love, holy and without blemish in his sight. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure. That all might pray the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. In him and through his blood we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Those things I used to consider gain, I have now reappraised as loss in the light of Christ. I have come to rate all as loss in the light of the surpassing knowledge of my Lord Jesus Christ. For his sake, I have forfeited everything. I have accounted all else rubbish, so that Christ may be my wealth.
Dear brothers and sisters, welcome. Welcome to this magnific magnificent Cathedral Basilica, a true sign of the great faith that we celebrate. We gather on the eve of the feast of the patron of this archdiocese and this city, that of good King Louis IX, one who ruled over an earthly kingdom, ever conscious that he was always subject to the heavenly realm. Our evening prayer of praise raises our voices to the God who rules over us not with great power and dread, but with a heart of love, a love that St. Louis embraced and emulated during his earthly life. It is the same love that continues to inspire us to serve our Creator by serving His people. Our reading this evening from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians gives us great insight into the motivation that St. Louis had in his care for the people entrusted to him. No earthly kingdom can ever surpass the one that God promises to his faithful ones, a kingdom permeated by God's love, his care, and a presence that reassuringly enfolds us always. This is a kingdom, though, where we are not merely passive subjects, but rather called to be active leaders. Over the past six months, we have been stretched to our human limits. The effects of the COVID-19 virus, the times of racial tension, and the lack of civil discourse have driven us from the unity that we so long for and that we need in living up to the call of God's kingdom. Our separation and isolation from one another is antithetical to the call that Jesus gives us to look out for our brothers and sisters. As subjects of God's kingdom, we cannot allow ourselves to yield to despair and merely throw up our hands in surrender. Jesus shows us the way to surmount the challenges of these times. Another saint who faced turbulent times was Rose Philippine Duchesne. Surviving smallpox, the French Revolution's reign of terror, the closing of her monastery, Rose was not willing to give in to the despair of her own day. Journeying to New Orleans, and then up the Mississippi River to our own area, she desired to bring the kingdom of God to this most Western outpost at the time. With a deep love in her heart and a desire to do nothing else but God's will, she was able to establish schools, help recent settlers, and inspire other women to follow her in religious life. Saint Rose knew of the great hope that was given to her in faith. Nothing else mattered than to bring God's love and a sense of hope to very trying times. Christ, indeed, was her wealth and joy. More recently, scarcely a generation ago, Another saint visited St. Louis in an historical journey. Pope St. John Paul II was one who also faced great adversity in his life. The death of his mother, brother, and then father by the time he was 19 years of age. The Nazi invasion of his beloved Poland, and finally, the tyrannical rule of atheistic communism. Yet, 
St. John Paul II's consistent urging to all of us was Jesus' own words, be not afraid. Like those saints who have gone before us, we too face adverse times. We well know the challenges that lie ahead, those roadblocks on the way to God's kingdom. But knowing of the great love that God has for us, his people, let us continue to be inspired by the lives of those saints, St. Louis, St. Rose Philippine Duchenne, and St. John Paul II, who show us that the way of love is truly the path to God's kingdom. Despite those roadblocks, we know that nothing can thwart the power of God at work in his church. Embracing the love and the hope that is ours, let us count all else as rubbish so that Christ himself may be our true treasure. Yeah. 
Let us pray to the Father, the source of all holiness, and ask him to lead us to holiness of life through the example and intercession of his saints. Holy Father, you want us to be called your sons and daughters and truly to be such. Grant that your holy church may proclaim you throughout the world. Holy Father, you want us to walk worthily and please you in all we do. Let us abound in doing good works. May we be holy as you are holy. Holy Father, you have reconciled us to yourself through Christ. Preserve us in your name so that all may be one. May we be holy as you are holy. Holy Father, you have called us to a heavenly banquet. Through the bread that came down from heaven, make us worth, make us worth to grow in perfect love. May we be holy as you are. Holy Father, forgive the offenses of every sinner. Let the dead perceive the light of your countenance. May we be holy as you are. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Let us pray. O oh God, who brought, who brought St. Louis from the cares of earthly life to the glory of the heavenly realm, grant, we pray, that through his intercession, that by fulfilling our, our dear dreams here on earth, we may seek you always in your eternal kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. Archbishop designate Rosansky, on the eve of your installation as the 10th Archbishop of the Archdiocese of St. Louis, it is our pleasure to join you in prayer and praise of Almighty God. We give thanks to God for the gift of your priesthood and of your episcopacy, and we also thank you for generously accepting the call of Holy Mother Church to make St. Louis your new home. This evening, I am pleased to introduce to you just a few individuals who represent the whole array of organizations and ministries who you will be blessed to serve with for the greater good of our archdiocese and the greater community. I now invite those representatives to please come forward. We are sorry that due to the need to observe social distancing in light of the coronavirus pandemic, everyone is not able to come together at once. Tomorrow you will be joined by your archdiocese and priest, members of the permanent diaconate community, seminarians, and a number of orders and institutes constituted by our dedicated laity as well as civic leaders who will be present for the celebration. As you mentioned in the press conference back in June, St. Louis is often referred to as the Rome of the West. That designation is attributed to the presence of the vast number of men and women religious who in so many ways are the lifeblood of this archdiocese. We are blessed by the presence of over 80 communities of consecrated religious who witness to the love of God through a variety of charisms, both active and contemplative. This evening, I am pleased to present to you the very Reverend Patrick McDevitt, Provincial Superior of the Congregation of the Mission, Sister Ellen LaCapria, Provincial Counselor of the Daughters of Charity, the Very Reverend Thomas Green, Provincial Su Superior of the Society of Jesus, Sister Sheila Hammond, Provincial of Religious of the Sacred Heart. The people of St. Louis have long been characterized by their deep reverence for God, and the Archdiocese is very blessed with long-standing relationships with our brothers and sisters of different traditions of faith. Through the decades, we have collaborated with the ecumenical and interreligious communities in a particular way to bring greater awareness and appreciation for the sanctity and dignity of all human life. It has been a blessing to our archdiocese to be able to walk with these, our brothers and sisters, as we all strive to better know, love, and serve God. On their behalf, I present 
the Reverend Rod Roderick K. Burton, the pastor of Northside Missionary Baptist Church, and his wife, Carlotta. The Reverend Jim Poinsett, Executive Director of the Interfaith Partnership of the Greater St. Louis. Maharat Rory Picker Nice, Executive Director of Jewish Community Relations Council. to assist you in your service to the spiritual needs of the people of St. Louis, the Archdiocese Curia and beyond are composed of a variety of organizations through which the faithful contribute their time, talent, and treasure. From the Education Office to the Evangelization Office, from the Roman Catholic Foundation to the Today and Tomorrow Educational Foundation. You will be well supported, Archbishop, through the course of your transition and beyond. In representation of the many agencies, offices, and organizations that make up the Archdiocese of St. Louis, I am happy to introduce Mr. David Watson, Financial Counsel and St. Louis Archdiocese Fund Chair, and his wife, Patricia. Sister Susan Marie Krupp, a member of our Archdiocesan Pastoral Council. Thomas and Kelly Adam Adamitis of the Annual Catholic Appeal and the Today and Tomorrow Educational Foundation Board. I'm happy to present to you now just a small representation of the vast number of groups and individuals dedicated to the service of the material and spiritual needs of their brothers and sisters. The Lord Jesus commands us to love our neighbor and tells us that those who hunger and thirst for justice are blessed. You will find that St. Louis is a home to many individuals and organizations who share this hunger and thirst. On their behalf, I present Mrs. Teresa Rizika, the president of Catholic Charities of St. Louis, Dr. Javier Orozco, executive director, human dignity and intercultural affairs, and Ms. Marie Kenyon, director of the Peace and Justice Commission. Please let me express to all of you who have gathered here to celebrate this evening on the eve of my installation as the 10th Archbishop of St. Louis and on the vigil of the Archdiocese patron saint. In particular, I am grateful to His Eminence Cardinal Justin Regali, Archbishop Emeritus of Philadelphia, and my esteemed predecessor, Your Eminence Thank you for your presence with us here this evening and tomorrow. We're grateful that you have come here back to your home in St. Louis to celebrate this occasion with us. 
I also express my deep gratitude to Archbishop Robert Carlson. Thank you, Archbishop, for your heroic leadership of this archdiocese over the last 11 years. And thank you for the many kindnesses that you have shown to me after the announcement. Thank you so much, Archbishop. Let us thank Archbishop again for his service. The Archbishop's dog, Molly, will be grateful now for his undivided attention. <laughs> to the representatives of the men and women religious, thank you for your presence, for your vocation, and for your witness. I humbly ask that you keep me in your prayers, and I look forward to the opportunities to visit with your religious communities. My thanks to the members of the civic community who are present here this evening. Thank you for your untiring work for the betterment of this community. I look forward to working with you side by side. A special word of thanks to the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department and the St. Louis Fire Department. I am grateful to the men and women of these departments who are giving of their time to ensure the safety of our celebration this evening and tomorrow. I'm honored by the presence of our friends from the ecumenical and interfaith community here in the Archdiocese of St. Louis. I look forward to collaborating with you and building a relationship over these coming years. To the members of the various archdiocesan offices and ministries that are here, and to the organizations which they represent, thank you for your untiring work and for all you do to minister directly or indirectly to the needs of the people of St. Louis. To Monsignor Henry Brayer and to the entire cathedral staff for all you've done to prepare this sacred liturgy this evening and for your assistance in celebrating the installation mass tomorrow. In a particular way, I thank the Scola and the musicians under the direction of Dr. Host Bocarts, as well as to the sacristans, seminarians, servers, and deacons who helped in our celebration this evening to make it such a beautiful one. Though I am unable to greet you all personally this evening, due to the needs to maintain social distancing, please know that I am honored by your presence here and that I thank Almighty God for the opportunity to serve you as your shepherd. God bless you and know of my prayers for you and please do pray for me. Thank you so much. Bow down for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Duceto, Estres Nostra Salve, A Te Clamamos, Estres Nostra Salve, 
Jesus. 